Now that we're back in the slideshow, you can see a, a visual example of what I just did in InDesign. So in this example, I searched for all objects containing a drop shadow. You can see that the background and the text in my document have a drop shadow on them. As I press the Find Next button, InDesign then searched through the document to find all instances of drop shadows. I now have the option to add a change object format to change the drop shadow. Maybe I want to get rid of it, or maybe I want to change the color, or the size, or the texture, or something about the drop shadow. Whatever I want to do, I can do that via the Change Object Format option within the Find Change dialog box, instead of just doing it manually over and over and over again um, within the, the full document that I'm working on. Using styles is another form of basic design automation. Using object, paragraph, character, table, and cell styles allows for the automation of text, objects, and tables within InDesign. We're not going to talk about these in great detail because we've already covered them uh, in an entire lecture uh, just by themselves, but we should acknowledge them as a form of design automation. This is another option instead of using the find and change. If you were to save things properly as object styles or as paragraph styles, you can easily change text attributes across multiple pages within a document. The same goes for master pages. Master pages are used to duplicate design content that repeats in the exact same way, size, position, color, typeface, etc. Uh, multiple times within a design, making one example on a master page and then applying that master page to a series of pages within your design is a form of design automation. If we decide that that item, let's say it's a logo, should change in some way, we can make one adjustment on the master page and then all instances of the logo will update to match it. A good example for master pages or is, or is an easy example are your page numbers. If you decide that they should all be in the bottom right hand corner and then you change your mind and you want them centered, you can make one change on a master page and it will automate the movement of all of the page numbers on every page in your project. Again, we are not going to cover master pages in great detail in this lecture, but we should acknowledge them as a form of design automation, as a really good form of design automation. After completing an introductory InDesign course or after using InDesign for a year or two, most InDesign users will naturally use most, if not all, of the design automation options listed on the previous 20-ish slides. So let's talk about some of the automation options that are considered intermediate level. These are the automation techniques you should be using but may not know exist or maybe you've heard of them but you don't really understand how they work or what they're used for. Saving, pre-flighting, packaging, and exporting are some of the most important features of InDesign. They ensure project quality and allow designers to format work for whatever op output is needed. So that can be you want to print it, you're going to make a PDF, EPS, EPUB, Export is HTML, create a Swift file, etc. Pre-flighting from InDesign is usually described as being either automated or manual. The pre-flight panel lists any automated pre-flight errors and helps guide InDesign users to a workable solution. However, there are some things the pre-flight panel does not check, so we end up checking them manually. For my example, InDesign doesn't know whether I'm preparing my project for print or for the web, so it doesn't know if my placed images should be CMYK or RGB. Or does it? By default, InDesign's pre-flight panel will check for missing and broken links, which we call images, and text errors, which are missing fonts or overset text, but that's it. However, it doesn't have to be limited to just a few settings. Custom pre-flight presets can be created to check for a variety of settings that may be important to you and for your project. A custom pre-flight preset is a saved custom profile that scans your InDesign document to check for the presence of particular settings you've chosen. When a custom pre-flight preset is used in lieu of a default InDesign preset, the pre-flight panel will now flag and display errors that do not match your custom setting choices. Custom presets can be defined by choosing Define Profiles from the Options Flyout menu on the pre-flight panel, and you can open the pre-flight panel via the Window menu, Output, and then choose Pre-flight. In this example, I am making a pre-flight profile that will flag any non-print settings. I've given my profile a name, offset print pre-flight, and selected options that are of value to me and my printed output. For example, I told the profile that RGB images are not okay and to raise a flag if they are found. I also said to raise a flag if any interactive media is found, like audio, video, animation, etc. These are just a few options. Explore the pre-flight profiles dialog box for more customization settings. Let's compare the results of applying the default pre-flight profile to a document within my newly created profile. I've placed four assets into my document, three RGB images and one video file also using RGB color mode. All four are not acceptable for my project since they contain web formatting, 
but the default preflight profile doesn't raise any flags. You can see I just have the basic working profile set and there are no preflight panel errors. This seems to imply everything is good to go and we can proceed with saving and packaging our project. However, we know it's not possible to print a video, so we know everything is not good to go. Now let's take a look at the same document with the same asset issues, but with a new preflight profile. This time, I changed the profile option to the one I created called Offset Print Preflight and immediately received five errors. One, there were color space not allowed errors, three images plus the video, and that there was an interactive element present, which was the video that I inserted. Creating a custom preflight profile allows for significantly more accurate preflighting compared to the default. Using the default means you will always need to perform manual preflighting in addition to automated preflighting every time you save preflight package your work. If you're going to be formatting something for the specific output over and over again, it's a good idea to create a custom preset, uh, preflight preset so that you don't have to manually check things over and over and over again.